Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with Gameplay Review episode number 12, where I take your gameplay submitted to me and try to give you tips and tricks on how you can perform better in online matchmaking. Now the game we're looking at right here was submitted by Dax709. We're going to call her Daxy as she is a female Spartan, and I'm familiar with her on Xbox Live. She's also a female in real life. I drove her to a perfection on Impact Station, which I'll link to you at the end of this video. But we join in the middle of a Legendary Slayer BRs game on Haven, and unfortunately, uh, Daxi is playing alone. She says she normally plays alone in matchmaking, and she plays uh, Team Slayer, and it uh, can be with CSR players 30 to 20. Right now, she's a 20 right now, and she wants to get better, but it doesn't necessarily mean playing with teammates. So we will be focusing more on her individual gameplay in this review, as it is. She doesn't get teammates till a minute or two into the game, actually. So let's just start this game play off. She's rushing bottom because a lot of players are going to rush top for the rockets. There's the sword and there's the rocket spawning open ramp right here. And you have the sniper spawning closed ramp um, over here. And that's what she's kind of running for along bottom red street. She's going to go to bottom trophy and grab the concussion rifle here, which is a good play. But Daxi right here, you really, really have to take your chances with this. You needed to push in on this guy grabbing the sniper with your concussion rifle and try to kill him and grab his sniper rifle and throw it off the map or start wasting its ammo. The reason being is because you don't want the enemy team to have two power weapons and you're almost never going to be able to get one of these players alone in a situation like this where you only have one teammate. They're almost always going to be together. So when you see a guy like this alone, you need to take advantage of it. As it is, you do a good job of suppressing him with your concussion rifle. Good shots here. So you're going to end up backing yourself kind of into a corner right here. And you have see three players in front of you. You're going to get sniped in the body here. And you're going to get also rocketed from top center as this guy pushes up. The guy drops down, then lifts back up. You fake out, but you're just going to end up being cleaned up here. And there's really nothing you can do about that. It's kind of unfortunate. That's why I'm kind of just speeding through these earlier points. Now right here, you do spawn on the blue street. And you charge immediately bottom center. What I can tell you for sure is that when the enemy team has a rocket launcher like this, you want to be going to the top portion of the map because it's very easy to rocket launcher someone who is below you, okay? For example, you can just stand right here and just rocket launcher, and it's very easy. You want to be getting top middle. And as you can see, if you had gone top middle, instead of going bottom middle, look at your radar. There's nobody there. You could have easily been able to kind of uh, get top middle on one of these platforms and sort of hang out and creep around and wait for them to come top middle again and then then sneak up behind him and melee him or something like that as it is you kind of go bottom middle and you're sort of seeing what's going to happen your teammate spawns behind you and so you're going to push out a little bit and then you realize oh that's probably a bad idea but uh this player is going to actually try to fire a rocket from top mid again like i said using that downward angle but he's going to waste that rocket on you very poor play on his part as he wastes that third rocket on you he has one more rocket remaining though and you're going to push back to blue ramp here now right here, you're kind of shooting top middle, and then unfortunately your teammate ends up being sniped in the body from the right here, and um, you're going to get pinched, okay? And this is this is un unavoidable um, if the players are sort of top mid and on top Mohawk area. They're just going to charge down the street while the top middle players remain their presence here, shooting the angles that they are doing already, forcing you to either move on to the street or onto the bottom of this ramp, and you're going to get dropped down on or just run uh, run over. Essentially, it's a good idea that you pushed up here and you're able to actually kill the sniper, which is a good idea, which you have been a little bit more aggressive with this push, however. Um, but as it is, you turn around. And this is really confusing, I think, to you, because this player essentially jumped from top middle and jumped bottom middle, and he's going to try to lift up on you. Um, he's doing that because you're the only two players there. What I would have done in this situation is grab the sniper rifle and throw yourself off the map. Now, I know this is not necessarily good for your score or necessarily your KD, but it is definitely the thing I would have done, or I would have grabbed it and at least tried to snipe some people, or I would have grabbed the sniper rifle and moved over here and tried to snipe this guy as he came up the lift and then melee him in the body for a kill. Those are just the different options available to you here. I feel like you could have done some of those, but as it is, you kind of wait and hang around, get a little bit confused by your radar, and these guys are going to, once again, have sniper and rockets. Now, again, you only have... Uh, one teammate right here, so I'm not really faulting you too much here. It's just the way you could have played better. Now, right here, before this guy even came up to this position, okay, before he even pushed up here, you you definitely knew he was here. 
I would have thrown a grenade right here, and then I would have jumped up onto this little barrier, all right? And it's really important that you do this because you need to get near something that you can use as cover, mainly this ledge, or eventually, if you push back down from this ledge, this central uh, area. Right now, he is close enough to this barrier that he can literally just peek out and ping you, okay? And while you might think, okay, I can use the same, I can use the same sort of angle, no. It's actually, he, the closer you are to cover, the more quickly you can manipulate the angles and be able to shoot players. So he definitely has the advantage in this situation because you let him push up so much top center without grenading, okay? A possible grenade, and uh, we're going to see you throw several good grenades kind of like this, is to bounce it off of this ledge or just sort of bounce it off the floor and make it explode right here. And as it is, he pushes up on you, and he's shooting several shots into you, and then he backs down. And this is a really good play on his part, because all he has to do is jump out from around the cover and shoot you in the head. This is exactly what he wants to do. Now, right here, what you should have done is you should have moved all the way to the right. And here, here's what this is going to do. He's extremely focused on his aiming right now. It is unlikely that he's actually looking at his radar. So he's going to jump out, expect you to be there, and you're not going to be right here where he thinks you're going to be. You're going to have moved over here. And even better yet, an advanced attack, you could have even jumped up on top here. And this is, I know this is advanced because you're aiming while moving and you're sort of jumping backwards. You could have jumped backwards onto this ledge and he would have definitely not gotten you with a headshot the first shot when jumping around the corner, most likely. But as it is, you stay in the same position. And again, you're at a disadvantage because you're not behind cover. He is. So he manipulates this cover perfectly, jumps out, and headshots you. I just wanted to give you a really in-depth analysis of that because later on you do several other very similar kind of mistakes during this gameplay. Now, I like how you pick off this player. Uh, players eventually here. You're going to eventually get a kill there. That's unfortunate. This is going to happen. This is the way the enemy team needs to set up having these players running around top and the sniper rifle on Mohawk like this. This, this sniper is doing a really good job of that. So we're going to uh, move on here with the film. I'm going to respawn on the same ramp. And this is what I like, how you spot this player who is weak from your teammate. But one of the things I'm confused about is that you just spawned here and you just got sniped here. So I'm guessing you're thinking, okay, he couldn't look. He couldn't look back here, which is okay. But what I will do is immediately push right. Okay, don't push top center because you don't know how many players are there. In fact, there's three players here. Holy crud, one you just killed. I would push right. Because this, there's no way this enemy player is going to expect you from here. Because he just looked at this place and sniped you here. So you can move along this, this bridge, throw a grenade right here. That's what I would do. I would throw a grenade at his feet, because he probably doesn't realize you're there. And then I would try to clean him up. As it is, you do kind of remain too much here in this angle. And I like what you do here, pushing to the right. Okay, so you're almost behind this barrier for cover. But then you don't end up using it as cover. It... it, it what seems to me here is that because this player briefly gets behind this little barrier right here, okay, because he briefly goes behind that, you go, oh my gosh, I have to move to the left to see him. And that's not, that's not what you have to do. You can see almost the entire platform or the entire, that entire side of the platform from here. And it is, if a player is one shot, it is so unlikely that they're going to crouch here and use that, that little angle for cover. It's not even funny. They're likely just going to drop off the side of the map and give away, give up top middle position. But as it is, instead of using this cover angle, and really you could have taken out this player, you end up moving to the left and shooting your last two shots, and it's going to force you to reload. I would have backed to the, to the right here and reloaded and then popped out and tried to kill him. Not stayed out in the open like you did. Um, if you're way too far away from this angle to try to end up backing towards it, you're just going to end up dying like you did here. There's really not much you can do about that except, you know, obviously use the angle cover manipulation that I've just stated. Good job picking up that ammo. A lot of players don't do that. Uh, picking up that ammo is really good in Legendary Slayer. Um, it didn't have much ammo, though. I think you got like three bullets from that. Yeah, you did. You picked up three bullets from that battle rifle. <laughs> it's 72 to 75 ammo. All right, so you're a top Mohawk right now, and you do have teammates. I want to point that out. She does have teammates now, so... That's good for Daxi, and she's not. She hasn't given away too many deaths, and her teammate hasn't given away too many deaths, which is good. You get an assist here. You're shooting and then backing down. Really good job here, waiting for your teammates to also push up. Get the second assist here, which is a really good job, and then you're going to also 
uh, be sort of looking top center. But this this play confuses me, okay? This, this player confuses me to no end. I don't think you knew that your shields were full here. And I think you thought this grenade was actually going to do something. And uh, to be honest, this is a brilliant grenade. Okay, I'm going to actually end up using this grenade that you throw here. But you put shots in this guy. And I want to actually move to this player's shield just so you can see how weak this player is. Very weak, all right? Then we're going to move back to you. And you throw a really, really good grenade, okay? Over here on this angle, and it bounces right here. But unfortunately, it's not going to do anything to this or do much at all to this enemy player. So... It's really confusing to me because you need to push up and kill this guy. Once again, there's only one guy on your radar, and the other guy, top middle, is focused on these other players. He's not looking where you are. Now, I understand that this other player is kind of watching his teammate here. What you could have done is moved over here, behind this barrier, using that barrier's cover, peeked out here and try to get the kill, and then move over here if you don't, okay? Again, spreading yourself out so maybe your teammate's going to get a safe spawn over here. As it is... Um, you kind of wait a little too long, but your teammate thankfully does come up from behind and kind of save your bacon. I'm not sure this is a bad play. I'm just giving you an alternative way you could have thought about the situation. You do end up getting the wingman here with a third assist. Really good job here. Now that second grenade that just got thrown did ping away a bit of your shield. And it's really strange here because I don't think you recognize that. Let me back up the film just a little bit, okay? Uh, right here, this grenade right there just pinged away a little bit of your shield. You can see that little red arrow. That's just above your battle rifle, the red arrow that's pointing to the top right corner of the screen. That means you just got damaged from that angle, which means your shields are not going to regenerate. If that grenade hadn't hit you, what you do right here and push out would have been fine, all right? Because your shields would have been regenerating by at that point. But because you got hot hit by that grenade, your shields weren't regenerating. So I know you didn't get killed here straight off or anything, but... And your shields do regenerate here, but I just want to let you know, make sure you're paying attention to that shield regeneration bar. Putting some pretty solid shots, and you back down using your cover very well to get away here. I like this play because the sniper rifle did just spawn behind you. You're going to wait for your teammate to get it, push up, and get yet another assist on these players, where I believe a fourth assist here. Really good job maintaining this angle. And I want to say this simply because... There's a lot of players I have to critique for hanging around in an area for too long. You didn't hang around this area too long in a bad way, okay? You didn't. You did a very, this is a very solid play right here. It's just, in general, your gameplay right here was very good. Now, right here, it's unfortunate. You do get another kill again, proving really well, but you're not watching your shield bar. It's unfortunate because you do get a kill here, which is great, and you get it in a very small number of shots. But I think what what's going through your head is, okay, I killed this player so quickly that my mu I must have enough shields to engage this next player. But this next player pings you with one needle, and you now have half shield because your shields haven't regenerated at this point. You must back down, run, and sprint, and jump off this ramp because this guy is going to do exactly what he does and double grenade you here and here, okay, which is exactly what he does. I think you tried to jump off here maybe, but that second grenade is definitely going to kill you. You can see where if you had just jumped and back, jumped off backwards, the grenade is behind this little glass barrier. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have touched you if you had been over here jumping off. So just keep that in mind next time. The player is using a needler, so you may have been able to take him out. But as, it, as you can see, there's likely to be more players behind him, and there is... So it's a good idea to back down here. Now, that guy throws a grenade. Uh, I would like to suggest a little better grenade than that is to try to throw a grenade kind of uh, a little higher off this little barrier. Uh, this barrier is a little more angled than you may think. So you can sort of throw the grenade off this little barrier, specifically right here, and it will bounce kind of onto into this corner, which is, and if you can get it to bounce right here, it's a really good idea uh, bouncing. But you throw the grenade a little low, that's okay. You're just kind of lobbing that grenade top center i like how you don't lob both of your grenades really good job pick up a second grenade here and you're going to see these guys top middle or should i say top mohawk you get a distraction here which is a good idea backing down once again up to this point pretty solid gameplay so far in terms of once you acquire teammates really good job using them to your advantage if your teammate picks up a really clutch kill top mohawk you're going to end up sort of looking top middle. But what you need to understand right here is that you see three players. And I don't think you recognize this. There's one, two, three players. And they're all working together. This is a really, really good job. And again, Dex, I'm not going to critique your team play too much. 
simply because your team, you're not, you know, you're, you're playing as a random. You told me in that description of your film, which is very helpful. But if you were with the team, you'd be doing what these enemy players are doing. And from top middle, pushing Mohawk or shooting Mohawk. Because it's very easy to do what they do here. And that is team shoot you and melt you very, very quickly. You see how both of them kind of fake back down onto this platform. And then both of them kind of just jump out and just annihilate you. Okay, that is a very, very common tactic. And it's very easy to do. And your teammate's doing a good job here, but unfortunately misses this player entirely and gets kind of embarrassingly cleaned up here. He's not going to be able to do anything. So uh, moving back to your player as you respawn here, you're going to respawn on blue ramp. Um, pushing up here. Now, for those of you who don't know, blue ramp uh, is colored by uh, blue color. That's the way you can tell. And the red red side is colored uh, by red lights, just in case you didn't know that. Um, so she's spawning on blue ramp, and you're going to look top middle and get this kill, which is really good job. Really, again, good job of backing down and using that angle. But you need to sprint top middle now because these two players on your right are going to push you. And you needed to use the second grenade and not charge out like you did here. You might even have been able to escape by running uh, bottom middle. And unfortunately, all your teammates are bottom middle uh, kind of right now. They kind of dropped here. I don't really understand why that necessarily happened. But right here, you don't need to go bottom middle. You need to go top mid. And the reason why is because you just killed the guy top mid. Okay, think about this. You just killed the guy top mid. And there's two players pushing you from blue streak. You don't know where the fourth guy is, all right, which is kind of uh, advanced to think where the fourth guy is. But you don't really know where he is. But if he even was top middle, that's only one guy top middle. You can take a one guy top middle. You need to go top middle and maintain that position for your teammates. One of the main reasons for this, by the way, is because not only do the rockets spawn on open ramp, but you can get safe spawns for your teammates on open ramp who can then go top middle. Okay, essentially, if you're in the middle of the map, you can go anywhere on the map from that position. You can jump even off the platforms and go to the bottom street if you want to, like we saw earlier in the film, that one guy who jumped uh, top, you know, jumped to the bottom street to kind of pursue you there. So as it is, you kind of run bottom mid, and I think you eventually clue in. I think you eventually go, okay, look, these long range shots I'm putting in right here, they're not going to do any good. I really need to get up top. But it takes you a long time to do this. And one of the shortcuts I want to mention is that you can just jump right here. Just jump from here to here. Okay, just do, That's all you have to do. You, you don't have to walk around this entire ledge, mosey around, mosey around. And one of the things I want to point out to you is this guy in the radar is below you. Okay, He is over here. He's not top mid. And it seems like you eventually, again, you eventually clue into that, eventually realize, okay, I can go top mid. And you do so. But now you have three enemy players on your radar now that are below you. This is a great position. You're just three kills behind the enemy players. So it's great if you can maintain top middle control. And you immediately see the fourth player pushing top mid. And you're going to really, really help your teammate by getting the assist there. Great job there. You would have gotten the kill. Um, and really good job watching your radar again, turning around and making this player one shot. By the way, guys, she just lowered all of this player's shields with some really solid shots. But now what I want to point out here is how your grenade throw right here while it's good, it could have been even better. Okay, this is a brilliant grenade throw, by the way. I'm, again, going to use this grenade myself because I haven't seen... This is a great grenade throw. You you want to throw it a little bit more to the left, though. And I didn't realize how angled this surface was, but if you throw the grenade from your position like this, and instead of throwing it like right here like you did, so it bounces over here and explodes, okay? If you threw it right here okay, against the wall, it would bounce literally over here, and it would have killed the enemy player. Now, you're going to do this once again, and it's still not going to kill the enemy player because you did it a little too close to the uh, ground portion of the wall. And yeah, but you did eventually do clean up this guy. But one of the reasons why I'm giving you all these tips and tricks is because look behind you. These guys are pushing on you from top middle. And if you had cleaned up this guy with a grenade just by sitting here, if you had killed him with your first grenade, you would have been able to immediately turn around and you would have likely not been surprised by this guy who's top middle and you likely would not have died. As it is, it's really difficult to predict what this enemy player is going to do. He dropped immediately to cut you off. Just a straight drop here. I, I would not have predicted that. I would have gone exactly the way you did and died pretty much the exact same way you died here. So I really can't critique that very much. Um, you can see, again, two players bottom middle. I would immediately rush top mid. And I know you're looking bottom middle to try to get some shots, which is great. But right here after you throw this grenade, I would jump onto this little ledge, jump right 
you know, get up here and jump top mid. You can even jump from this little ledge to this platform right here if you're a little unsure on on it on if there's guys top middle if you want to get a kind of extra flanking maneuver or if you want to push up a little bit more make sure there's no one really bottom mid you can then crouch jump onto this little ledge right here crouch jump up this little ledge and then crouch jump up or sort of crouch uh, jump up onto this little ledge right here that's the di different ways to enter top middle from the bottom trophy or bottom mohawk portion of the map but you're going to run bottom middle here and unfortunately, by the way, again, brilliant grenade right here. Just really, really good grenade, okay? Using this angle, you perfectly naded the center here. And this is this is what I call just a good grenade, but it didn't hit anybody, but it's still a good grenade. You know, I, I oftentimes coach a lot of players who are not using their grenades creatively. And you are definitely one of those players who is using their grenades creatively. So I applaud you for that. Now, right here, you did mention in the description of your video that you sometimes panic scope and this is an example of it right here now i want to break this down for you okay one of the reasons one of the main reasons i find for players panic scoping i'm just going to rewind the film for you guys so you can see her panic scope here and there's no need to zoom at that angle essentially you're clenching your controller too hard and you accidentally scope in by clicking the right stick okay so one of the main reasons why players panic scope is because they're using their aimer. In other words, their right hand stick, okay? I'm assuming you're right-handed. They're using their right-hand side aimer analog stick to aim more than they're using their left analog stick to move their shots, just simply move their shots into place. Now, I realize that aiming at long range is very important, and I'm not saying that aiming is completely, you know, not preferable at mid-range, but at mid to close range, you can rely more on your left to right movement to line up your shots than normal, okay? And this is one of the reasons that can prevent you from panic scoping, simply because one of the top reasons for players panic scoping is because in close range encounters, if you move even a little bit left or right with your aimer reticle, you're going to be quickly moving over the enemy player and missing your shots. So essentially what you're doing is you're clenching your hand really hard trying to make these really small, minute, really minute, you know, uh, aimer decisions onto this enemy player, and you, you're clenching your hand so hard trying to, you know, aim, essentially with your right hand, that you're, you accidentally click in and, oops, you know, I'm zooming. Well, what you can do to eliminate that is simply move left and right more into your shot, okay? This puts more of the stress on your left hand and frees up and loosens up your right hand a little bit more so that you can focus more on just lightly tugging your reticle into play okay like your like, like just boom move in br you know move one two three four they're dead okay that's what i'm trying to say just one two three four okay that's again that's a uh, pretty simplified strafe but right here it would have worked just fine to take out this enemy player so i hope that detailed analysis of panic scoping helps you in the future i know a lot of players have had a lot of confusion as to why they panic scope it's just simply because you're trying to make too many minute adjustments to your aim or whatever or the that particular analog stick. So right here, uh, you do are down by you're all tied right here, and you do uh, lose the lead again here um, uh, pretty soon. Or actually, you gain the lead by one kill. The sniper rifle spawns, and I was really excited to see you pick this weapon up. So you're gonna push to top mohawk, and this is a really good positioning here. Because you have the sniper rifle on Mohawk, your teammates are all top center, this is really good. So you want to be watching these side areas, okay, and watching top middle. And you get a pretty good snipe here. Taking out that player, you guys are now three kills ahead of the enemy team. That was very quick. Through. But watch your teammates. Notice how they're all bottom. That's a really bad idea. They didn't need to drop like this. Because you as a sniper can literally prevent people from charging from top mid. You can body shot them and your teammates can just be sitting right here and just jump up and go ping and shoot them in the head when they try to get top middle as you body shot them. So it's really unfortunate because your teammates are not playing this map correctly. Um, they should stay top middle. And right here, it's really important to realize that this player charged from the right. So it's very important to realize that you can be pushed on the right along the street as well since you only stall one player here, okay? You need to really, really keep that in mind, and as it is, that's exactly what ends up happening to you. You see these players, but a little too late, and you're sprinting. You're also kind of aiming at the ground, which you shouldn't do. Only move from left to right when you're trying to sprint. You don't need to try to, 
try to move your aimer down to buckle down and sprint. Like, you don't need to do that. Just make your, keep your aimer on the same level. Your sprinting is going to be the same, okay? Just, just always just move from left to right like this, keeping your sniper rifle on the same same angle as people's heads. If you aim downwards, you're going to have to readjust, and that's exactly what ends up happening here. But unfortunately, you get a grenaded and shot in the head, and this guy doesn't even have to fire a rocket at you. Now, it's crucial to understand that the enemy players are now going to pick up the sniper rifle, top mohawk. This is nearing a kind of close game, 11 kills or 10 kills till you end the game. You are four kills ahead of the enemy team. And I want to point out here one thing. You did not lose this game. You actually state that in the description of the film that you submitted to me. You did not lose this game, I guarantee you, okay? And if you watch the score from here on out, you will definitely notice that the majority of the deaths and the reason why you lost this game, spoiler alert, is because of your teammates who are doing dumb things. Now right here, this is an unfortunate play that you could have done better with, okay? You know this guy's a sniper, okay? You just peeked out, he just tried to snipe you, and you just backed down. What this guy is expecting you to do is this, to push out here, and he's going to plane you in the face. Now, what this sniper can also do is he can also push up, get a better angle on you, and just keep looking down the street. What I would have done is I would have jumped up once here. I would have backed down here, jumped up once, pinged him, okay? Shoot right there where he's going to be, okay? Right here, and pinged him, okay? As he come around the corner, just to disorient his aim a little bit, and then you're going to fall back down, obviously, after that jump. But the thing that this player is going to expect you to do, okay, and the reason why you ping him like this is to let him know, hey, I'm here. Don't push up on me because I already have a shot on you, okay? But you didn't do that. So this player is like, oh, this player only has one shot on me. I'm just going to push out, okay? Like, no tomorrow. If you had pinged this guy, I guarantee you he would have been like, oh, I got I pinged again, okay? I'm going to make sure I'm going to see, okay, this player jumped and tried to shoot me again, all right? Maybe I'm going to just sit here and wait for this player to jump again. And that's where you get into their head, okay? So. Now that you have, you're inside this player's head and this player doesn't know what you're going to do next, you're going to hurl a grenade, okay? Because that, that is safe. You know, you're, you can hurl a grenade from here and you have two grenades right now, which is great. You're going to hurl a grenade across the map and try to nail him in this general area. You could even throw two grenades. Then, using those grenades as cover, you're going you're gonna to push up after throwing that second grenade or as you're throwing that second grenade, you're going to push up, throw that second grenade, jump up here again so that he does, has a very limited window to hit you, grab these two grenades, jump over here, and grenade between these pillars, and then grenade down the hallway again. Now, that's the only way you're going to actually be able to take out these two players. As it is, you didn't ping this guy. You threw, backed up through a grenade. It didn't end up doing much good. It only did a little bit of damage to this guy who actually sprinted up and around the corner like this, around the corner like that. But this guy ends up uh, peeking around and just blaming you in the face, just like I... Uh, was pointing out right here, and this that was a way to better handle that situation, I felt like. That's why I went into so much description there. And as you can see, your, your, your teammate just charging out with an assault rifle. Um, just getting, giving away kills. Your teammate just got cleaned up by the rocket launcher, which is really unfortunate the enemy team has rocket launcher here. But I want to back up and really, really address uh, this specific, this specifics here. So rewinding the film, as you spawn open ramp and sort of push up to top middle here, you can see that your teammate just got shot by a rocket launcher but you can also tell this player after rocket launching him you can see on your radar that this enemy player dropped to the bottom trophy bottom center portion of the map but you know that this these players are going to be mohawk okay and this is really unfortunate because yet again you don't you don't use cover and let me let me break this down for you okay this enemy player is using cover he's going to back down and make it so that his head is barely visible behind this little barrier which is exactly the advantage of being behind Mohawk. The only disadvantage is that you can be grenaded quite easily from here. Okay, But you're not using any cover at all. Here's the reason why you're going to lose this battle. It's not necessarily because of the weapon you're using or because this player has a better shot. It's because of the cover system. And because the battle rifle slowly inches up with every trigger pull that you shoot with the battle rifle, the weapon slowly ticks upwards. Okay, And you have to bring the battle rifle back down again. If you shoot a shoot a, a few shots at this guy, you're gonna you're gonna be shooting at his head, and then you're gonna be suddenly aiming above his head. So it's really hard for you to actually hit this player. So you need to definitely try to use the cover. Try to try to back down to the left here, or go to the right here, and and fake around here. Wait for half a second. Wait for him to try to grenade you. Then peek out and jump jump out again and try to hit him in the head. Do something like that to fake him out. Don't just try to out be our player who's behind cover. Back down next time. 
Uh, you give away that death there, but again, you're in the lead. So again, it's not your fault. You're, you're now you're tied, and um, you lost the lead by one kill here. You are doing a pretty good flank by pushing Mohawk here, um, and kind of getting another angle here. But as you can see here, your teammates are really uh, just too focused in general uh, on this area. Okay, they're really focused on this area, and one of the reasons why you didn't lose this game is because of the double kill you're about to get here. You're using an alternate angle and spreading out to the right, and I really like that because you're going to get a really good double kill here, and it's going to allow you to gain the lead by one kill. So really nice job there. Now right here, I want to point out that your teammate kind of charges in here and really doesn't look at the other team, the enemy players down the way here. Your teammate is going to kind of get away, and there's nothing you could have done here because this second guy is shooting you. This first guy completely... Uh, is, is really, really focusing on this other character, and this other guy is focusing on this, on you, okay? And these two players end up literally winning the game, okay? Because they're working together on the street, and they're going to literally push all the way down the street, all the way to Top Mohawk, and all the way to Blue Street, okay? And it's very unfortunate you end up being taken out here. But more importantly, instead of your teammate backing down here on this uh, little uh, little barrier here, your teammate doesn't back down, okay? Your teammate just waits to get grenaded okay, by the second grenade that's going to pop right here, which is a great throw grenade right here, and just dies. Okay, He needed to drop down and then run away as soon as he saw you die. So he gives away that, that kill, and now suddenly you're tied again, and that's really unfortunate. So you spawn bottom blue street, which is pretty unfortunate. You did tie the game, but right here you should have recognized that this player was on the same level as you. He, uh, he or she is bottom middle, pushing uh, sort of the blue ramp area. You could have lifted top middle. Because you know that the two players are over here, and now you know that the third player is in the bottom street, lifting top middle is okay because there should be only one player there. And I haven't seen the sword pop up very recently, so you should be safe to do that. But you end up hanging around, and yes, you do end up cleaning up this player. And that's actually a good play. I thought lifting top center would be better, but you did end up getting that uh, that kill there, which is really good. But unfortunately, you have two players above you who are really working well to push to Blue Street. And you end up coming up from behind. But again, I'm going to point out how dumb uh, your teammates are just, just to make you feel better about the situation because it felt like you really felt like you lost this game. Um, I'm going to back up here and make sure you see that the, the, this, this, they got a really easy kill on your teammate who literally just stood here. Okay? Literally just stood here and let himself be killed. All right? And then right here... This guy just literally, he knows these two players are here on his radar. Your teammate just lifts up here into two players, gets immediately instanated or prenated, and boom, dies. Okay, that's two straight kills in a row very easily, and there's nothing you can really do about that. Right here, you're trying to flank them, and you think, okay, there should be weak because, you know, three teammates just died in a row, or two teammates just died in a row trying to kill these guys. So they should be weak, right? Well, no, they're going to grenade you, again, working together perfectly. You try to get away. But once again, they execute perfectly. One staying on the top street and one charging you along the bottom street. Okay, So one is going to stay up top and, and going to wait for you to lift or something. And one is going to charge you along the bottom street. Now what you could have done here and what you needed to do is lift immediately. Because this guy along the top street is farther back from you. Okay, He's farther back along this area. So it's really important that you back up and lift up here. The reason why is because you could have thrown... A grenade maybe earlier i don't know but there's really not much you can do is this guy's going to clean you up for the final kill you did not give away that that game though the all the deaths that came from your teammates earlier were definitely more contributive to you losing the game but guys uh that is a gameplay submitted by uh dax uh 709 you can see your gamer tag at the bottom there if you want to submit your own gameplay to me check out the link in the description and if you want to watch me actually uh review a gameplay uh, with Dax0709 in the matchmaking experience where I drive her to a perfection with a Warthog on the map panic, panic Station, click the video in the top right-hand corner now, and that'll take you to that video. As it is, guys, thank you for watching Gameplay Review episode number 12, and I'll see you guys in the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace.